Today's message is entitled Caged Life. Caged Life. We go to the book of Revelations. We'll start in chapter 18, a part of verse 12 and also verse 13. And we see here that the Babylonian merchants are selling things. Uh, verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and the souls of men. So I ask, how can the devil trade in or sell the souls of men unless he has souls to sell? And how does he get these souls? Well, the devil comes, but not to steal, kill, and destroy. So he probably stole the souls, killed somebody or killed something or destroyed something to get these souls, John 10 and 9. So you can know that if the devil is anywhere around you, he's going to try to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's not there to bring you anything. No pleasure, no fun, no wealth, no fame. Although this is what he's going to be telling you or having you to believe that he's there for your fun, for your pleasure, for your fame, for your wealth. It's a trick. But... The soul of man is captured by the devil by any number of ways. We're going to go pretty deep today in this, and we're going to have some very strong prayers. So stay here. Stay with us. This is going to be liberating in the name of Jesus. So when the soul of a man is caged, it really means that that man's soul, his mind, his will, and his intellect is controlled by a demonic spirit or demonic powers. But we are told, God tells us to, in the word, to possess our souls, to prosper our souls, which means we are to have a well-ordered and a matured soul. We're not supposed to be letting go of it, getting rid of it, trading with it, or allowing it to be stolen. But yet there are evil spirits that are soul hunters. Sounds like a fantasy, doesn't it? But it's not. And for example, for all of us to know that the souls of every witch and wizard, warlock, any worker of the dark arts is a caged soul. They themselves have caged souls. And it's ironic, too, because many of them go into the occult for power and they end up losing the power or the authority, the God given authority that God gives all of us just for being here on earth, being born here on earth, being born in flesh and being set in dominion under, un, under his authority. And then they end up under demonic control themselves. Irony. And it's a bad thing. So here are the signs that a soul is caged. It may not be all of the signs, but it is a very good start. So you can judge whether you or someone you know or love that you are going to pray for is suffering under a caged soul. Here's the first one. Whenever something good is about to happen, something goes wrong somewhere. So these people's lives are peppered with non-achievement, failure, disappointment, backwardness, failure at the edge of success. And you know, if you've accepted this, then you're one of the people who's always waiting for the other shoe to drop. But the other shoe doesn't have to drop. We are in the kingdom of God. We don't have to put up with this in the name of Jesus. The second one, talking out loud in your sleep. Signs of a caged soul. Three, when a person knows that they should be much further along in life, much further ahead in life than they are, but they're relegated to being beneath and not above. The tail and not the head. Four, when a person absolutely refuses to surrender their life to Christ. You have to realize that if the soul is caged, this person really is not in control of their own will anymore. More than likely, too, they've been programmed by the devil without even knowing it, without even realizing it. And they're programmed to not want to be around or be attracted to or go for the thing that's going to deliver them. You think the devil wants them delivered? 
five, if a spouse suddenly says that the person they married is just not the same anymore. Hmm. They could have been captured. Their soul could have been captured. Six, a person who cannot feel the move of the Holy Spirit, no matter what. Can anybody remember the lyrics to that Al Green song? My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. If you can't feel God in your soul, your soul may be caged. Remember, your emotions, your emotions are in your soul. If you can't feel your soul like you used to, or you can't feel for other people like you used to, like you know you should, your soul could be caged and just becoming an emotionless zombie. In the dream, we're going to go over some more of these, but in the dream, if you're seeing slow moving animals in the dream, like serpents, snakes, tortoise, snails, you could have a caged soul. Or if you're in the dream again and you're in a thick forest and you're lost, you can't get your way out. You could have a caged soul. Or if you're in a store, you're shopping all the time in the dream, but you never buy anything. You just wander around and around in a store. You can suspect a caged soul and also you can suspect spirit spouse. There's some messages on this channel about spirit spouse, spirit children. Look those up. I think they will be enlightening for you. But if you're in your dream and you're just wandering and wandering and you can't find your way home, that is the sign of a caged soul. Number 11, double or split personality. Nobody knows what your reaction to anything is going to be on any given day. And you've heard people say like, I don't know about that one. They come and they go. Mm -hmm. They may not need a prescription from a shrink. They might just need prayer, deliverance. Twelve, if you feel lifeless, like the life and the life's blood has just been drained out of you. I mean, that's the same symptom as witchcraft attack. But who do you think is trying to capture souls? The devil has human agents in the earth. And for what reason would someone want to capture a soul, a human agent? Why would they want to capture a soul? Well, that's their assignment. And maybe they owe the devil. They probably do because nothing's free. Remember, they themselves have captured souls and they're just doing what they're supposed to, what they're told to do by the, by the devil. 13, soul tied souls are captured. Yeah, if you're like pining away and grieving over a lost love, a lost relationship, a lost anything, career, business, opportunity, anything. And you can't get past it. Your soul is captured. If you're hopelessly soul tied, your soul is captured. Your soul is fragmented and captured. But we're going to pray about this and we're going to get deliverance today. Amen. If you can't focus or concentrate, remember, your mind is also part of your soul. And let me say here, senior moments are not normal. People accept them. But they are really not a normal progression of aging and aging well in the Lord. Suspect a caged soul or witchcraft attack. When people are like in the middle of a sentence constantly, and I don't mean just once or twice, but constantly and they forget what they are actively saying at that moment many times in a day. Could be caged soul. We need to pray. We want to pray against the cage life. We want to pray for that person. And we're going to do some heavy prayers. I'm telling you. So this is what the Psalm 23 is about. When we are asking the Lord to restore our souls. That means we want him to not just break us out of the enemy's cage that we got in through familial sin or our own sin, rebellion, disobedience. But in Jesus name, put us back together. Restore our soul, Lord. Remember us. Remember us. Put us back together. 15. If you see yourself as having a twin in a dream, caged soul. 16. If you have dreams of being summoned out of your body, caged soul. 17. Hearing strange voices. First, you need to repent and then pray. Get some sleep because you could just be sleep deprived. Sober up. You could have been into some stuff you weren't supposed to be into. 
But if this persists, see a doctor, but pray. You know, this is my opinion, but people whose souls are caged or imprisoned may feel and often feel like they're trapped. And they really are trapped. They may know that they're trapped, but instead of looking at themselves, they may look, instead of looking at something spiritual, I should say, they look at the physical body and they think, oh, I need to change who I am so I don't feel trapped anymore. When really this is a spiritual problem, a natural solution, no matter how complicated it is, how complex it is, how devastating it is, it will never fix a spiritual problem. A natural solution will never fix a spiritual problem caged soul caged life is a spiritual problem or a person who feels trapped they may look outside of their physical body all around them and find somebody to blame they may find somebody to blame for their feelings of being trapped because they really are trapped but it's their soul that's on lockdown not their body not their life and their spouse is not the one that has them trapped Their souls are caged. Their lives are caged. And this also applies to singles who may have been snared by the devil at an early age. And you're thinking, what, me? Yeah, uh uh-huh, you, any of us. Because the devil starts early. You should listen to the message, son, on this channel, especially if you're over 18. It's pretty enlightening. So a person that's entrapped by the devil at an early age may think, um, you know, that other people that they're trying to date, they want to trap them. Well, you can't really be trapped again because you're already trapped. If you think that you've got to go from date to date and person to person and just drop one, get another one, drop one, get another one, another boyfriend, another girlfriend, one after the next because you want to be free. And all the while you're just doing the thing that caused you to not be free in the first place, to try to get free. Yeah, we're going to pray. And so what is that thing you did, you're wondering? Oh, sin. You know, the day you said to God, I don't need you. I can do this all by myself. I don't need your guidance or protection. I got this. The day you thought you were big enough and bad enough and grown enough to do exactly and only what you wanted to do, That's the day you really said to God, I got this. And I'll tell you now, no, the devil got this and you're the this. He's got you in a cage. He's got you living a caged life. And I think of the 40 year old, the 40 year old married man who gasped and said he just wanted something new. I guess he meant a girlfriend or a new wife or something because he was a dissatisfied soul. But he was just programmed in a caged in a caged life and being programmed by the devil to go and like break up a marriage, commit some sins so God could then judge him and then the devil can go and accuse him before the throne of God, falling right into the trap. And so that new something that that man should have gotten was maybe to get his soul out of the cage, maybe get his soul out of jail, get the soul out of the devil's cage. And we're going to find out. Keep listening. And first, before we we continue, I want to I want to give a shout out to the real men, the real men who know how to answer the question marriage. How can you be with the same one person for the rest of your life? I want to give you a shout out because you know what the answer is, man of God. And your answer is I'm delivered. I'm not living a caged life. I am not under any spirits of lust, et cetera, et cetera. I don't have a spirit spouse. I'm saved. I'm set free. I'm alive and serving God in Jesus' name. Uh Uh-huh. And that's called normal. We praise God for all the real men in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. But there is deliverance for all the rest. So a satanic prison is really the worst prison ever because the owner of the prison is Satan. And the, the prison is run by Satan and everybody, all of his minions and his agents. But we all have to realize that if anybody is in, if their soul is in a, the devil's cage, their soul is in hell. The person's alive, but their soul is in hell. Their body is here on earth, but their soul is in hell. 
See, your body is here on earth going through whatever emotions it can go through in life. You know, one step forward, two steps back. Kind of like those frustration dreams you have when you can't really accomplish something that you're trying to accomplish in a dream. Or you can't get out of a predicament or a situation in a dream. Yeah, except this is your real life. So it's way worse. So your soul is in this prison. It could be a prison of affliction or torment or pains and suffering, captivity, sorrow, bondage, any number of things. And your destiny is on lockdown because you're being precluded from doing the things you're supposed to do. The reason God sent you here and your star and your glory have been captured. We have to know what to do because this can be deadly. Your business could be captured. It could be caged. It should be way more successful than it is right now. It's caged. Your marriage, if you, if it even exists, is either delayed or you don't even have marriage on your radar at all. Your soul could be caged. Your dreams, both your night dreams and your hopes for the future are detained. Caged soul, caged life. Your soul and your life is being ruled and controlled by the spirit world, Satan, demons, witches, wizards, evil marine powers. There's a lot to fight. There's a lot to pray about. And your soul is fragmented. Your mind and your intellect are in hell. In hell. And so what's your soul doing in hell? Oh, it's serving the devil. Well, how so? Well, whatever the devil thinks up, whatever he thinks for you to do, remember, you're programmed. He's got control of it. And you just do what he says. And this may or may not be a glimpse of what hell will be like when a soul really goes to hell full time and permanently. Most likely it's not. Most likely it's worse. As bad as this is, it's worse. But when time is up, a person who has not received Christ, they're going to go to hell. And this is what happens there. You work and you work and you work for the devil doing whatever he tells you to do. Cage soul, cage life. You can go a little bit forward in this cage, but you can't go far. You can hop, but you can't fly. You can walk, but you can't run. And your life is in slow move. One step forward, two steps back. You may have ideas and things in your head that you want to do in your life. Because remember, your body is here, but you can't seem to accomplish them. And it's been years. Cage soul. And I just want to bring a reality to you that if you're in a cage or your soul is in a cage, what do you think is next? You better figure out how to get out of that cage alive. You're not a pet. The devil doesn't like you. I say it all the time. I'll keep saying it. The devil's not planning to teach you tricks and give you snacks. What do you think your soul and any of your blessings or virtues or gifts from God are in a cage for? We said at the onset, the devil sells this stuff. You're for sale. You're for barter. And if not, what if nobody wants to buy it? As bad as that even sounds. So you need to get ready to bust out of that cage Break out of that cage, out of that prison in the name of Jesus. First thing you do is you surrender your life to Jesus. You surrender to Christ. You run to him if you haven't already. It is the only way out of the cage. It's the only way out of spiritual jail. It's the only way out of devil prison or caged life. And it's your only way into the kingdom of heaven. Because no man comes to the Father except by Jesus. Amen. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And after you run to Jesus or as you're there with him, repent. Fall on your knees and repent for all your known sins. Ask God to show you where you're in sin because maybe you just don't know. Maybe it's hidden to you. Or this door could have been opened by an evil or deceived ancestor years ago, decades ago, hundreds of years ago. But now you are feeling the, the hurt from it. You're feeling the ramifications of it. And you got to do the work. You got to engage in spiritual warfare. You may have to fast and stay in prayer. You keep praying, you keep praying, you keep praying until this thing breaks off of you and you break out of that cage. Psalm 49, 15 God's word um, version, but God will buy me back from the power of hell because he will take me. Selah.
And then we're warned in Proverbs 23, 14 B, God will deliver your person's soul from hell if they do the work, do the, the will of God and walk in disciplines. But this is a warning for parents to teach your child, train your child, give them discipline so their soul will not be end up, will not end up in hell. But God sends warnings to us and he sends us signposts along the way before we actually capture it. And I want to bring up some more points of some things that can happen in the dream. Seeing yourself in a cage in a dream, that's a really big clue. Feeling trapped, we talked about that. You can't move forward and you're caged. Your soul is caged. Your destiny is caged. Your star may be caged. Your marriage may be caged. Your career, education, family, ministry, all may be caged or any part of it could be caged. Remember, this is fragmented. It's usually the part that you send with is where the devil has the access. Search your soul. Ask God. If you're in a dream and you're just waiting, waiting, waiting for somebody, that is a sign of stagnation, non-achievement. You know, I bind the spirit of waiting in the name of Jesus right now. In a dream, if you're unable to open a door to a room that you're in, that door could be spiritually locked by an evil entity. And I declare, Father, every power that is blocking my way, locking my doors, my opportunities, blow that power away in the name of Jesus with the wind of God. If you're having a hard life suffering and you're noticing circular problems, cyclical problems, seasonal problems, and you're not coming out of certain problems, you could be in a cage to life. We talked about the thick forest. If you're in a forest and now strange animals are coming up to you, Mm-hmm. That's you're in the wrong location. Bad programming. God did not assign you to go there. You need to pray, Lord, take me out of any wrong location in the name of Jesus. Seeing yourself in a prison or jail in the dream. All of the purpose of all of this is to make you waste your purpose for being here, to waste your time, to waste your life and just to make your life in vain and useless. You need to pray, Father, any power that wants to put my virtues in captivity in a prison or a cage or a jail, yielding me a life of difficulties destroyed by force, by fire in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to achieve destiny. Lord, scatter the plans of the wicked against me in Jesus name. Also in the dream, seeing goats, hens, bears in a cage. You need to know that something about your virtues is captive somewhere. If you're struggling to prosper and enjoy the blessings of God, somebody somewhere has locked up and blocked up your destiny. And this is where I really want to focus today. If you're seeing a person like the image of a face of a person in a bottle in a dream or seeing yourself in a bottle in a dream, that means that they are definitely spiritually imprisoned or their star is imprisoned or their destiny has been programmed somewhere else. Lord Jesus, Father, any evil bottle assigned to lock up my destiny, let that bottle, evil bottle break now and release me in the name of Jesus. And in the dream, if any person issues a curse at you in the dream, that's a sign that it's obvious. It's not even just a sign. That's literal, really. Father, turn every curse of my life into blessings in the name of Jesus, whether in the dream or in reality. I pray, friends, in the name of Jesus, that your dreams will return to you, that you'll remember them and that you get proper dream interpretation from a Christian person who can interpret dreams properly, not just random online interpretation, because you need to know what's happening in the spirit so you can direct your prayer life and save your life from a caged life in the name of Jesus. And here are some common spiritual prisons, a prison of affliction prison of barrenness, a prison of bondage, a prison of death, a prison of debt, prison of failure, prison of fear. You know, we talked about that in last week's message, a prison of generational curses, prison of poverty, prison of sickness. And you know, there's custom made cages and those cages are to entrap you and snare you, keep you locked in, locked down and to do you the most harm and to give you the most torment. They are custom made. 
So anybody could have a caged destiny, caged blessings, caged education, caged marriage, caged car. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Even a caged house. And how can this even happen, you ask? Well, you see, the enemy may try you out at first by just drawing a line, like a line in the sand and daring you to cross it. And if you're not paying attention spiritually, you might say, oh, well, I think I'm not going to go and do that anymore because something negative or something I didn't want to happen happened. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, that makes good sense in the natural, but in the spirit, you have to ask what thing happened and who bought that thing that happened to you. You have to be very discerning. So if you don't do anything to cross that line, even though the devil made that line and you didn't discern that it was the devil and not God, then the devil will just draw you another line and you don't go past that. And what do I mean by this? I mean that that if something happens and you don't pray about it and ask God about it or tell anybody or get counsel on it, namely talk to God about it, but get counsel from wise people and other Christians. If you don't search it out to see what the word says about this thing, maybe you don't fast, you don't do anything. You just don't cross that particular line anymore. Let me give you an example. You, what if you give in the offering and then your car breaks? Well, that's the devil drawing a line. So you stop giving in the offering and then your car didn't break anymore. That's the first line. And let's say now he's going to draw another line. And this is like a game of hangman almost. And the devil is successful, so he draws another line. Let's say you pray for your husband every night, but every morning he's acting worse. That's another line. So you stopped praying for your husband. And when you stopped praying for your husband, he started acting at least the same or maybe even better. That's the devil messing with him. Maybe he's got a caged soul too. So now he draws another line and another line. All it takes is four lines and now you're boxed in. But you have to cross enemy lines in the name of Jesus. You have to walk over all of these lines. You've got to pray, praise, worship your way past the enemy lines. You've got to call on the name of the Lord. You've got to plead the blood of Jesus because the enemy's line shouldn't hold you. So don't hold yourself back from it. Don't accept what the enemy's dishing out. You've got to fight. Because now that you're boxed in, you've got four lines around you. You're in a square. All he's got to do now is drop the cage. And you're imprisoned. And now all your stuff is on lockdown. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I repent of all addictions, laziness, willfulness, disobedience that has caused any caged life situation in my life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, deliver me everywhere. I need deliverance in the name of Jesus. So today, I especially want to talk about caged blessings. I want to talk about people, for instance, who have been in college for five years, 10 years, 20 years, maybe you're just on part time because you got a whole spouse and family now and you just can't seem to get that degree, that certificate. You can't seem to finish that program. I set you free to matriculate and graduate today in the name of Jesus. Cage education, you are broken. Door of the cage, you must be blown open by the Holy Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. People whose marriage seems to escape them. People who want to be married and they can't seem to be married. I bind every devil from hell that is holding you back from meeting the person that God intended for you and having a fruitful and fulfilling marriage in the name of Jesus. You need to listen to the messages on spirit spouse, spirit children and covering cast on this channel for in-depth understanding and deliverance for things that could be blocking you from marriage. And for those who don't think you ever want to get married, I unlock your mind. I unlock your thinking in the name of Jesus. I uncage your mind in the name of Jesus to the possibilities in the future that God has for you in Jesus' name. Caged car. You've met people who just can't seem to keep a car. They keep wrecking their cars or something else weird happens to their cars. Like I had a friend, her car just suddenly caught on fire. Or the car just constantly breaks down, gets repoed. That's the devil trying to keep you in one place your entire life. You got a caged car. Yeah, he can cage your stuff too. He wants to keep you in one place and not progressing. 
But you need your car for school. You need your car for your children. You need your car to get your kids where they need to go, to the school, to the doctor. You need your car for work. You need your car for groceries. You need your car just to run your house. And in the case of any type of emergency, and I proclaim today in the name of Jesus that you will become a person who can have a car, own a car, drive a car safely and wisely to purposeful, non sinful places, and you will keep a car. And I see in the spirit you receiving the title, the full title, the full ownership of your car in the name of Jesus. Some of you for the very first time. Thank you, Lord. Congratulations. You now own your own car. It's yours. Thank you, Jesus. Caged houses. The devil is going about caging houses, people's homes. And you need first to repent of all addictions, laziness, willfulness, sin that's caused any caged house situation in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver me everywhere I need deliverance in the name of Jesus. Because you see, the Bible promises everyone a place to rest and a right to ownership. Because it says in 2 Kings and and Isaiah and in Zechariah that we're going to eat fruit from our own vine and from our own fig tree. And we'll drink water from our own cistern. We can invite our neighbors over to sit under the tree with us. God has promised us that. God has promised us in his word that we'd have a place. Even the birds have nests. And God made man from the dust of the earth and he breathed life into him and he gave him a name. He set him in dominion and he gave him a place in the Garden of Eden. He gave him a place in paradise. And even though Adam lost it, we have been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Everyone should have a house. Everyone has a right to have a place to call home in the name of Jesus. And I proclaim by the blood of Jesus that you will have your own house. You will keep your own house. You will live in your own house and you will own or sell your house and keep the profits and the equity when you're ready to move and not before in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of the nomad. I bind the spirit of the vagabond. I bind the wandering spirit. I proclaim peace, stability, and steadfastness over you and your dwelling place in the name of Jesus. I pray to the Lord El Shaddai to give you divine and regular provision of more than enough to acquire, buy your house, pay for your house at regular intervals and maintain your house and make it into a home for you and your family. And when it's all said and done, this house can be even be a good inheritance to your children's children in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you knowledge, wisdom to know how to handle all details associated with your home. So there will be no surprises, no worries, no stress, work, yes, but also the joy of home ownership in the name of Jesus. This prayer is anointed of God. I see some of you getting a second home. Or even more as investments in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I break every ancestral curse, every family curse that has run in families that has blocked anyone from getting a home, keeping a home. Father, in the name of Jesus, I shatter the evil altars that are responsible for these curses. Send your mighty angels with a thunder hammer of God to break up every evil altar, break every evil covenant, break every evil curse. Bind every demon assigned to carry out the curses in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive the family member who bought this curse into the family line by the blood of Jesus. Lord, you promised in your word we'd have a place. Thank you, Lord. You cause us to dwell in safety. Thank you for our homes, for our neighborhoods, for our communities. And I encage every caged home right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us the mind to work and pay fees, our rents, our mortgages in the name of Jesus. Mighty warrior, angels of God, break every pot, bottle or other container that cages every home for God's people. Unearth every buried blessing and remember every home and marriage that has been scattered by the evil winds in the name of Jesus. Wind of God, blow it back together. Lord, crack open every safe that vaults every home of God's people. Lord, open every lock, every padlock that locks every home from God's people. 
Lord, break down every wall and gate and door and barrier and every realm, age, timeline, dimension, and across every access point in the name of Jesus. Father, break me out of every evil timeline that I either mistakenly, willfully, or in ignorance walked into in the name of Jesus. Put me in the timeline of the righteous scroll that you've prepared for me from before my conception so I may reach my destined future. Lord, perfect those matters that concern me in Jesus' name. Amen. I repent of all addictions, laziness, and sin that has caused any caged house situation. In the name of Jesus, Lord, deliver me everywhere. I need deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, break the curse of bad housing and bad housing situations off my family bloodline in the name of Jesus. Father, break the curse of bad landlords, slumlords, tenement housing in the name of Jesus. Father, break the curse of unfair banking practices so that the people of God can buy houses in the name of Jesus. I break the curse of redlining in the name of Jesus. I break the curse of caged people being swindled out of money and property in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak of good housing and I lose good housing, good neighborhoods, good neighbors, good plumbing, good utilities and other services in the name of Jesus. May we always dwell in safety away from gangs and other evil activities of the night, especially in the spirit and in the natural, in the name of Jesus. Lord, the time has come for your fury to be unleashed against the enemy that blocks and keeps and takes people's houses away from them. In the name of Jesus, reverse every curse. So the people of God have been suffering too long. Reverse every caged house curse in the name of Jesus. Break every caged house out of its cage in the name of Jesus. Send Holy Ghost earthquake, Father. Blow open the prison doors and loose every house, every home, every apartment, any type of dwelling place that you have for your people, condos, townhouses, whatever you have for them in the name of Jesus. They'll have a place to call home, to lay their head and to worship and adore you in the name of Jesus. Cyclic problems with home ownerships or home loss, threats of home loss, worry, anxiety, stress, especially for seniors and the aged, widows and the oppressed, single parents. Lord, bless them to stay in their homes. Bless them to own their homes. Bless them to live in and use and rent out if their homes, if that's what they wanna do, or to sell their own homes as they see fit in the name of Jesus. Father, the key to this uncaged house, I cover it in the blood of Jesus. Give it to your beloved and let them hide it where no enemy of God can ever touch it. In the name of Jesus, make this key, this lock, the very deed to this house, too hot for the enemy to even want to touch it. In the name of Jesus, hide it in the cleft of the rock so it's no longer a target for the enemies of God. Lord, give us divine wisdom and ears to hear and a heart of obedience to do, as you say, to remain in our abodes in the name of Jesus. I dwell in safety. No evil shall befall me or my dwelling in the name of Jesus. I pray the peace of God over your homes. I pray the blood of Jesus over your houses. And may the Lord bring the spirit of peace into your home. May the angels of God be welcomed there. And may the Holy Spirit also take up residence in your home with you. As you worship and serve the Lord and you pray with your family in the name of Jesus. Lord, every power pursuing my destiny, die in the name of Jesus. Every power that wants my life caged, die in the name of Jesus. Every power that wants my soul caged, die in the name of Jesus. Every power that wants any of my blessings caged, die in the name of Jesus. Any power that wants my health caged, die in the name of Jesus. Lord, break me out of every constriction. Father, in the name of Jesus, as you broke Peter out of jail in the book of Acts, you sent an angel to rescue him. Thank you for your mighty warrior angels to rescue us. You broke Paul and Silas out of prison with a mighty earthquake. Father, throw open the prison doors. Throw open the doors of every cage, every prison, every cage of affliction and death and loss. And I take my freedom now in the name of Jesus. Lord, uncage every blessing in the name of Jesus and let the trap of Jesus snare every arrester of my soul in the name of Jesus. 
Every soul hunter and soul arrester be arrested in the name of Jesus. My placenta be released from every cage in the name of Jesus. I possess all my blessings in the name of Jesus. God arise and contend with those who are contending with me in the name of Jesus. God arise and fight, fight those who are fighting me in the name of Jesus. All those who seek my life, I command you to receive double disgrace, double destruction in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring to light every darkness, shielding my potentials in the name of Jesus. I break every curse of backwardness in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for setting me free. My destiny, my star, my purpose, my ministry, my marriage, my family, my education, my career, my house, all my belongings and future belongings free from every satanic prison. In Jesus' name, and Lord, arrest the soul traitors. Father, search the land of the living and the dead and gather every fragment of my soul in the name of Jesus. Rescue my soul from hell. Ministering spirits of God, wash me with living water and wash the, by me by the washing of the water of the word. Wash my fragmented soul. Feed me bread of heaven, bread of life. And return my soul back to me in Jesus' name. Lord, I promise to possess my soul in sanctification and honor. I promise to prosper in my soul, as your word says, so that I may be in health and prosper in Jesus' name. Lord, restore my spirit. Restore my soul and my body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I have not come into this world in vain in the name of Jesus. All wickedness working against me scatter by fire in Jesus' name. Every wicked power blocking my progress die by fire in Jesus' name. Father, anyone that is locking up or blocking my destiny within three days, let your judgment be upon that them in the name of Jesus. Collective captivity, caging my soul, my spirit, my body, break, break, break and release me now. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray every satanic agenda plotted against me is destroyed in Jesus' name. Every evil timeline, every evil calendar, every evil clock is crushed in Jesus' name. Father, break me out now from every satanic detention in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I am free from every satanic manipulation in Jesus' name. Father God, let every garment of the prisoner that the enemy has forced me to wear catch fire in the name of Jesus. I'm no more slave, no more captive, no more prisoner in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for angelic help that delivers me from the hand of every principality and power. In Jesus' name, Father, every cage, caging my glory, my star, my destiny, scatter by fire. In the name of Jesus, Father, every iron gate locking me out of my future, destiny, blessings, I break you open by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Lord, uncage every divine miracle in the name of Jesus. Father, let every gate and door that leads to my breakthroughs open by fire. In Jesus' name. Father, let every satanic guard or security assigned to monitor me sleep and die in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for saving my life from the cage, from the spiritual prison in Jesus' name. I shall live and not die. I shall declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living in Jesus' name. Amen. Angels of the Most High God, raid every satanic warehouse housing my blessings and let those warehouses receive fire and double destruction and release my blessings to me in the name of Jesus. Every prison of poverty, debt, lack, affliction, sorrow, grief, sickness, death, failure, shame, fear, spinsterhood, barrenness, bondage, any prison that the enemy has put me in or prepared for me, receive earthquake from heaven and scatter now in Jesus' name. Be reduced to rubbish in the name of Jesus. Father, sentence every enemy that is after my life to life imprisonment with torment. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, thunder and earthquake strike to death anybody, anyone making incantation against me at any altar or shrine in Jesus' name. Arise by fire and consume every household enemy giving information about me to the enemy in Jesus' name. I bind the mouth of every evil spirit, familiar spirit, monitoring spirit and unfriendly friends reporting on me in the name of Jesus. My Father, Lord, my Creator, let every power of darkness troubling my life become impotent right now in Jesus' name. 
Father, I delete my name from every prison file by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. God who delivered Paul and Silas from the prison of the enemy, arise and deliver me from every satanic prison in Jesus' name. Every forest and rock demon assigned against me fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Every local charm burnt against me be roasted by fire in the name of Jesus. I release myself from ungodly parental linkage in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, manifest yourself in my life by your name. Wonderful. Every bird of death assigned against me fall down and die in the name of Jesus. I withdraw the food and drink of my problems in the name of Jesus. No evil family river shall flow into my life in Jesus' name. I refuse to live a floating life in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of the vagabond and I loose the spirit of stability and steadfastness in the name of Jesus. Every deeply entrenched problem in my life dry to the roots in the name of Jesus. I destroy the weapons of satanic night raiders in the name of Jesus. Angels of God with swords drawn encamp about to destroy the night raiders in the name of Jesus. Night raiders, I blot out my name from your list with the blood of Jesus. Lose my address, lose my location in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, erase every evil mark from my body and my life in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold of failure be broken in Jesus' name. Anything planted in my life by enemies come out with all your roots and die in the name of Jesus. All the mind programming while under soul captivity be undone in the name of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ and I desire to do his will in Jesus' name. I declare and require that the enemy restore back to me seven times all that he's stolen from me in the name of Jesus. I bind all retaliation against this prayer in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that it is done and we are free and we possess our possessions, the tangible and the intangibles in the name of Jesus. And you be glorified, be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.